G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor again. Uh, this will be a quick and easy video tonight. Uh, what we're doing is making some mango chilli jam. So what we've got in there is about 350 grams of cherry tomatoes, just chopped in half. Um, 350 grams of jam setter sugar. The jam setter sugar has the extra pectin, which is what makes it set. A um, bit of a cheats way, but you know. Um, there's what else is in there mango I chopped up a whole mango um, and there's probably about five little red chilies chopped up and thrown in as well now the trick with these jams is you always use about the same amount of jam set of sugar as you use fruit um, so what I've got the final ingredient that we're going to add is some white wine vinegar and we'll just pour that straight into the top here and we'll throw that in on top um, so it's a great way for me because I don't eat a lot of tomato but I do love tomato sauce oddly enough and tomato paste and this tomato jam's a cracker um, so the tomatoes are, are homegrown, the chilies are homegrown, the mangoes are bought one, uh, the vinegar I didn't make myself obviously, although I have been thinking about doing that, um, but that'll be another story. So I'm going to put this on and let it simmer, I'll bring it to the boil, and then I'll probably let it simmer for about an hour, just to cook everything down nice and neat, and I'll give you a look at how she goes at the end, eh? She's actually got two lots of chilli. Uh, that's one of those little bell chilies. I didn't use that one because it's um, not really ripe enough. So I left him out. The other one's the other chili that I used. It's a little bird's eye chili. So you can see that's at a rolling boil now. That's what you call it when it's like that, a rolling boil. Um, so I'm going to let that have a rolling boil for a little while. Probably, uh, probably only about a couple of minutes and then I'll turn the thing down to a nice quiet simmer. Um, and she can stay like that for an hour. I tell you what, it bloody smells good. Um, the other thing I've noticed is I wash my hands about 45 times now with soap. No, no kidding. Oh man, oh man, that chilli really embeds into your fingers. I scratched the tip of my nose and now that, that was on fire for about 10 minutes. Made the mistake of sticking my thumb in my mouth and suffered for that one. I had to have a little drink of milk after that. <laughs> so now I know why they use... Um, gloves when they make chilli jam and chilli sauce. Anyway there you go, we'll let that go for a minute and then we'll turn her down and we'll come back when she's just about done. A little quick discussion about um, sterilising the jars. Uh, to my mind this is probably the most important bit of any preserving or jam making process. Your bottles have got to be utterly sterilised. Um, I've got two new bottles there they're only cheap Charlie ones bought from, you know, dollar score stores. Uh, that one's a jam jar, which I've used numerous times. Now, it just so happens that I happen to also be a distiller. So, I don't carry on with boiling bottles and stuff like normal preservers have to do. Um, I wash them in the sink, you know, with part of normal dishes. Then I run them through the dishwasher because that's going to be far hotter than I could ever tolerate. Uh, then they get uh, a kind of industrial strength uh, disinfectant uh, using a product called EGA, which is used in um, alcohol making, you know, beer making, wine making, any of that stuff. Um, they're rinsed twice after the detergent and then they're hit with a sterilising agent that's probably a bit like nappy sand, you know, a lot of people didn't know those nappy treatments that sterilise nappies. My guess is it's a lot like that. Um, then you just tip that out and you leave it to dry, preferably in the sun, um, and she's good to go. So in a minute we're going to use those sterilised um, jars. I'll just give you a quick look back down in there. That's been bubbling away for, gee, probably an hour, close to an hour now. Um, I've tasted it very carefully because this stuff is damn hot, folks. So don't go sticking your mitt in there or anything silly like that, a finger or anything, or don't just pick up your spoon and shove it in your gob, you'll be very sorry. Um, and it doesn't need anything. But, you know, I always say, you've noticed probably that 
the trick to this stuff is you have got to learn to taste your food. Um, then you adjust it to suit your taste. That's the only way to get any of these products really any good. All right, so we'll um, switch back on when we're... I'm going to give that probably another 20 minutes to let it boil down a bit more. Um, and then we'll switch it back on when we're about to bottle that up. There you go. So there you go. Um, didn't bother to film bottling it because it's kind of boring. You literally just spoon it from the saucepan into the bottles. Ended up with about two and a half bottles, which from 300 grams of tomatoes is a pretty good haul, I reckon. Um, and it really is fantastic stuff. Tastes fabulous. So now you know how to make Andy C's Mango and Chili Jam. And we'll see you next time, folks.